Lisbon, Portugal, November 1st, 1755. Across the city, a celebration is underway. Thousands of Christians are packed into churches to celebrate a festival known as All Saints Day. But then, at about 10 a.m., without warning, disaster strikes. A massive magnitude 8 earthquake occurred in the Atlantic Ocean seafloor right along the tectonic plate boundary between Eurasia and Africa. The shaking from this earthquake knocked down about 85% of the buildings of Lisbon. Even worse, this earthquake occurred while most people were in mass, in church or cathedrals on All Saints Day. Lisbonites are in all these churches, and many of the most major churches in Lisbon were destroyed. It was one of the most devastating earthquakes that Europe had seen in centuries. In a matter of minutes, the massive earthquake reduced the buildings throughout Lisbon to rubble and opened a 16-foot wide crack in the ground through the center of the city. Estimates place the death toll as high as 50,000 people, or about 20% of Lisbon's population. In the early 1700s, if you had listed the five great cities of Europe, London, Paris, Rome, you well might have included Lisbon in that list. But after 1755, Lisbon's glory was reduced literally to ashes. Lisbon rebuilt, but never really reached the same glory that it had. In the aftermath of the horrific quake, the residents of Lisbon struggled to understand why this tragedy had befallen their city. Many among the Christian populace, who had only heard of such devastation in the Holy Bible, believed the earthquake to be an act of God. Lisbon was dominated by the Catholic Church, a very, very religious city. So lots of theologians started to ponder the meaning of this event in religious terms, because the fact was this earthquake had struck Lisbon on one of its holiest days, the Feast of All Saints. It had killed tens of thousands of Christians while they were worshiping. Why did God choose this day to bring an earthquake upon the people of Lisbon? And this was a confrontation for many theologians, and they blamed the people of Lisbon. They said, you must have been sinful. The only reason this could have happened to you is that you are not living by God's laws. While some people thought the earthquake was a punishment from God, others focused on taking practical steps to guard against such a calamity in the future. One of those people was Portugal's prime minister, the Marquis of Pombal. In the reconstruction of Lisbon, the Marquis de Pombal oversaw really critical innovations. The first is to build earthquake-resistant buildings. These are built around wooden frames that can actually sway with an earthquake rather than collapse. And then he improves the city. Before, it was these winding medieval streets which people could get blocked up in. So the Marquis de Pombal, he redesigns the city on a gridiron system. So all of a sudden, you have now really wide, straight streets, which are ideal for evacuating people. And in fact, the way that he handled the reconstruction of the city is the first instance of modern disaster response in history, where someone actually tries to take a rational response to the effects of a natural disaster. The varied reactions to the Lisbon earthquake have actually been quite common throughout human history. For thousands of years, mankind has tried to make sense of these violent tremors that often strike without warning. Earthquakes have a really unique place uh, in human consciousness because you can't see it coming. It's not like a giant storm that you can see the clouds approaching, see the lightning, hear the thunder. Earthquakes you feel and you hear, but that happens in the moment. You can't run out of the way. There's nowhere to hide. The problem of earthquakes and how to deal with them goes back to antiquity. The first seismometer to measure earthquakes was actually invented by a scientist named Chang Heng back in China in the first century of the Common Era. 
This was a beautiful bronze, almost like a cask, that had dragons around the perimeter with balls in their mouths. And beneath them were a little array of, of bronze frogs. And the way the device worked is the pendulum inside would rock just so, bumping a lever in the direction where the earthquake occurred, and a ball would fall out of the dragon's mouth and land telling you the orientation of an earthquake that had happened. And all developments since then on earthquake detectors, we call them seismometers, have been variations on that theme. Today, experts understand that earthquakes happen when massive underground rocks known as tectonic plates suddenly collide, causing seismic forces to be unleashed beneath our feet. Scientists can measure an earthquake's power and even pinpoint its location. But in spite of everything we've learned, we still have a hard time predicting where and when the next earthquake will strike. <laughs>